Thank you very much for the introduction. So this is Ono. I am from Tohoku University. So I am going to talk about the uh, electrons and spins and all the related the phenomena. So in that regard, the Professor Tokula already talked a lot about the areas that I'm talking after Professor Tokura, so I think you already are familiar with the uh, electrons. So today, so the uh, the dream as well as the uh, sustainable sustainability, and uh, we're supposed to talk about our dreams in the science. So the what I'm going to talk about is that is the uh, spintronics. So what I have done in the spintronics. Mm. So first I'll explain what the spintronics is, but this is quite a broad area. Therefore, I'll just uh, explain using my own um, history in the research of spintronics. And of course, uh, this research is still ongoing, so I have not come to conclusion yet. Therefore, my research is to be continued. But uh, let me uh, share with you what I have done so, so far. So as you can see, it's say the um, semiconductors. So I created a new semiconductors and that those uh, semiconductors have not been applied to the any uh, useful way. But um, with this research, now I am thinking about the application to the uh, VLSI. So this is uh, some kind of try and errors. Therefore, if I try, uh, maybe uh, I can hit some success. Of course, uh, there are several uh, errors as well. As the Professor Takura already explained, um, his uh, electron is depicted in a green color, so my electron is also in green color. And uh, actually, the electron doesn't have any color and doesn't have any uh, di a, a di dimension, therefore it's very difficult to depict. But um, this is just a schematic um, picture of the electron since it has the mass and charge and spin. And in semiconductor area, uh, we use uh, elect uh, electric uh, charge to process the information. And uh, when it comes to the uh, magnetic bodies, the uh, spins, spins are all aligned to the uh, same direction. So once the spins aligned to the same direction, they become magnet. So this magnet is used in hard disk. So for example, in terms of the recording devices, it's used the hard disk and the spins, the facing upward, downward, and sideways. So by using this different orientation, the information can be recorded by using a magnet. So um, it's used a different aspect of the uh, electrons. But if you combine the characters of magnetic body and uh, semiconductors, so this is the areas I was intrigued in 30 years ago. So this is a curiosity-driven research. So I was uh, very curious about the combination of semiconductors and magnetic body. And I began this research. And uh, well, the semiconductors are used in the transistors and also magnet. Um, those are created as a discrete uh, devices. And uh, by combining these, um, we can come up with a um, totally new technology. But in the beginning, so the when I look at the materials, which is um, a magnetic uh, body, but it has also semiconductor properties. And uh, we 
then came up with the uh, new the um, compounds with the magnet magnetic properties. So this is an indium. So this is an indium uh, crystal. So indium is in the group five, and also arsenic is in the group group five in the periodic tables. So it's called the three five magnetic uh, semiconductors, and those are used in lasers and transistors, but they are not the magnetic bodies. So in order to convert them into magnetic bodies, they must carry the property of spin. Of course, um, there are different electrons, and in our body, uh, there are electrons as well. Therefore, there are spins in our body, but we are not the magnetic body because uh, those spins are not aligned. So in a net basis, you are not able to see the spins which are reside inside our body. But here, in manganese, uh, it has a spin, and, and by using this kind of element, so those semiconductors which do not have any magnetic property are converted into the magnetic body. So that was my the, uh, research. So um, Dr. Munakata, who is now with the uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology, and uh, this research was actually began in the IBM Research Institute, led by uh, Dr. Esaki, and then I joined this research by using a tunnel diode. And this was quite challenging because uh, indium layer and also manganese so uh, thermodynamically, they are not supposed to be mixed. It's like uh, water and oil. So also in this diagram, uh, they are mixed up quite orderly, but not they're supposed to be uh, mixed up. But uh, we tried out to mix uh, these two different elements. And this is our first challenge. Actually, it didn't, didn't much time to uh, make it happen. We were able to come up with some material where the enzyme and the manganese are mixed up quite orderly. And uh, with this, now uh, this material has spins inside, and uh, we tested this material. So, this is the result of the experiment, it took place in 1989. Uh, although we do have a data in the computer, but this is the uh, result of XY recorder to look at the curve. And uh, it's a little bit difficult because there's no horizontal axis and vertical axis. But the horizontal axis is basically the, the electric field that is applied, excuse me, magnetic field that is applied. So, although we uh, use a different Japanese word for the, the magnetic field, depending on the discipline, but uh, the same um, magnetic, magnetic field is applied. That is in the horizontal axis. And the hysteresis, already the Professor Tokel explained, so if you apply the magnetic field, then it's a change, but it doesn't come back on the same track. So this is what is about the hysteresis. I believe uh, Dr. Atokula already explained this. So if you have a hysteresis, it means it has the magnetic property. So we tried out um, by creating this a co a compound, uh, we wanted to make it and carry some magnetic properties, but they became actually magnet. So why? And we tested. So this is a hypothesis uh, we came up with. And Dr. Detail from Poland collaborated with us, and we came up with an idea. So all the, the materials and have a different properties, but um, this can be applied to a set of materials. So our magnetic um, semiconductor can be explained by this formula. 
And uh, let me explain. This is a spins of manganese. So we added uh, manganese into our uh, materials. So manganese has three functions. One is that it has function uh, other spin, therefore that uh, magnetic um, um, uh, element are introduced. And also the dopant, as the professor Dr. Rao already explained, mm. in, in semiconductors, uh, well, the carriers are something that carry the electrons. So if this moves, then the uh, you have the electric current. So the semiconductors and the, of course, uh, it doesn't have a good uh, electric um, column, but um, by having this hole, you are able to uh, have the good uh, electric uh, current. And uh, the manganese provided this function to this material. And also, there are also the spins in the carrier as well. So you have an electrons and you have a spins, but you have a hole, and then now you have some additional spins. So in carrier, there are also spins. There are interactions between them. So this is an exchange interaction. And for example, if this uh, point up, and then uh, if the spins also point up, and this is uh, about a gain of the energy. And now uh, uh, spins are aligned in manganese, meaning that it has a high energy. So in a world, the uh, random state is a uh, lowest energy state. And if you have an uh, ordinary state, then energy is high, meaning that if the spins are aligned, ordinary, then energy is high. But there's uh, interlock interaction and energies in carrier are, uh, goes down if those spins are aligned orderly. So there is a, a loss of energy into the right-hand side and then gain of the uh, energy in the left-hand side. And if you apply lower temperatures, uh, they will come to an equilibrium. And then uh, once if you have certain equilibrium, then that uh, it will gain the energy, and this is a Curie temperature. So this is a quite a simple calculation. So you can see um, this formula, and if you calculate our compounds, um, can be explained by this formula. So why our compound has a ferromagnetic property? This can be explained by using this formula of a Curie temperature. So now energy is stable. So ferromagnetic state is now unstable. And if there is no gain of energy, then it becomes unstable. Therefore, by changing this, we can do something. So this is our next step. But on the other hand, the Athena model, so this model itself, is for uh, cobalt and their metal. So this model was actually uh, proposed, but uh, it was also rejected later because if the carriers are metal, then concentration is much higher, so numbers are very high, therefore it has a different phenomenon. That's why this uh, model was rejected. But uh, this uh, theory that was once abandoned 40 years or 50 years later, um, this uh, model is now useful in our compound. So increasing and decreasing the number of carriers, this is a basic principle, one of the principles of semiconductors. For example, transistors, if you apply the voltage, if you apply the uh, um, electric field, um, they have certain function by increasing and decreasing carriers. So by changing the number of carriers, uh, you can turn off, turn and turn, turn off, turn on and turn off. 
And the professor thought Lau already touched upon this. So this is about the uh, electric field effect. This is about the capacitor. So you have a metal on insulators and semiconductors. And so in between metal and semiconductor, you have this kind of capacitor. And uh, only on the surface of this uh, layer, because of the, the voltage, uh, the charge uh, goes up or goes down. So only the surface areas, the thin surface areas, the carrier concentration. So by changing carrier concentration, you might be able to change the property uh, on the surface of those materials. If you have a metal base, and if you have metal and metal, there are a lot of ele electrons, therefore you are not able to do so because there are too many electrons. Therefore, simply giving a certain level of voltage, you can't change. And if you uh, apply more voltage, uh, insulator will be broken. Therefore, this experiment was impossible in the past. But now, <clears throat> the semiconductors we created, that uh, now exist in non-equilibrium state. So by having a new type of semiconductors, we are able to test, to look at the magnetic properties by changing the uh, applied electric field. Uh, well, so this is the result of the experiment. As I said, so this is a capacitor. Here you have um, metal insulators and semiconductors. And uh, our semiconductors, so indium, manganese, and arsenic. So first you must make it very thin, so it's uh, five nanometer. It's quite thin. It's qu so by having a thin layer of this semiconductor, Oh, and this uh, picture is taken from the top. So G is where the uh, voltage is applied, and the voltage is applied to our semiconductor, and there are many um, pins all around to uh, measure different properties. And this is 22.5K, so if you just subtract 300. So this is extremely low temperature. And so zero volt. This uh, black line is for zero volt, and this is a magnetic field on the horizontal side, and also the orientation of the magnetic field and strength. And hysteresis is observed here, but there's subtle hysteresis. And then a uh, plus electric field is applied here. So carriers to be stable. Well, uh, the uh, carrier's numbers are reduced here. Then this uh, red line um, comes out and hysteri hysteresis is gone. So in a ferromagnetic body, this hysteresis is disappear. And by having minus voltage, then you can induce um, carriers. Then now you have a magnet like this one. And if you go back to zero volt, then it uh, goes back. So it's a reversible a changes of the properties. So magnetic properties can be adjusted by using different voltage in low temperature. This is not the uh, electromagnet. Well, elect electric magnet, um, you can just uh, turn on, turn off. But uh, this itself is a magnet as a you know, material. So it's about the you know, alignment of the uh, magnet itself in the elect um, electron, uh, electric um, material. But here, uh, we apply different voltage into different new uh, compounds and to change the property of magnetism. And in the press release, uh, we published the data of this experiment, and it's quite difficult for us to explain the difference between the two. And this is the uh, the uh, extension study, and here that uh, by applying 
different voltage, the orientation of magnet can be also changed. I won't go into detail. So the orientation of magnet can be changed by the electric field. And with a low energy, we're able to change the orientation of the magnet. So this is still ongoing project, but in the future, and this could be used in uh, the LSI um, as a device. And uh, thinking about magnet, of course, magnet has a long history. This is a lodestone. This appears in the uh, ancient Greek uh, document, BC R5, for example. So it's been already uh, 2,500 years since the lodestones uh, was um, appearing in document. And also, maybe young, younger generation, they don't know it, but this is uh, open rhythm uh, tape recorders and also you have a hard disk, compass, electric vehicles. So magnet has been used in different, uh, use, different areas and different products. But the, the usage is the same. So once you create a magnet, you just apply it without changing property of the magnet. But uh, what I'm talking about is that uh, we are able to change the property after the magnet, magnet is created. So this is a new dimension of the usage of magnet. So the experiment was conducted in extremely, extremely low temperature, therefore the cannot be applied to the real life immediately, but then um, there's a possibility. And what I'm going to talk about now, uh, we see some uh, hint or clue that we might be able to uh, reproduce this result at the uh, room temperature. So this is a French group, and this is also a university group. So based on our research, they replicated the, our research result by using metal. So this is uh, the iron platinum. This one is iron as material. And then this is the half of the hysteresis. By different voltage, the orientation of magnet can be changed. And this is the same. So this uh, curve. So the magnet, the orientation of magnet, and this orientation can be changed by the application of different voltage. And this um, was done in room temperature. And uh, those are experiments uh, performed based on our research that was published in year 2000. So our research was applied into the metallic uh, compound. And based on our research, various research teams um, conducted these um, researches. So we are a bit behind. Um, therefore, we try to catch up once again. And uh, this is the uh, magnesium oxide and cobalt iron boron. This is a uh, metal, metal magnet. And here you have uh, electric field of application. Then hysteresis uh, changed. So this is uh, conducted at the room temperature. So this is possible. So uh, metal magnet, so those who are dealing with the uh, metal magnet by applying um, electric field because the uh, carrier concentration is too high, therefore this phenomenon is supposed to be impossible. Therefore, this was possible. So I'll explain why later. And uh, let me uh, switch gears a little bit. So far, I have talked about uh, my curiosity driven research. So I was simply uh, curious about this area. That's why these uh, researches are conducted. And then um, I mentioned application to the uh, uh, LSI. Therefore, 
now we, we need to think about how it can be used in the reality. So the, from the curiosity driven research, how we can make it applied into the real world. So this is my next topic. And that is about integrated circuit. Integrated circuits have a difficult issue. One thing is that the power consumption is too much. The other problem is that there are wirings inside to have the communication, but uh, the, there is a time consumed and also the power necessary to do this connection. These are the two major issues about the LSI. To improve the performance, this problem has to be overcome. Uh, this is uh, the ear, uh, the horizontal axis. So as the time uh, advanced, uh, the consumption of the power increases. The active power is necessary to process information. So uh, this is by definition has to be accepted. But look at the standby power. The power is necessary even if it doesn't do anything. Uh, the VLSI, the LSI um, turns on and off the power. Even the power is off, uh, the consumption of power is very high. Uh, so we cannot turn it off completely. And uh, the, there is a small leak uh, current um, by the transistor, but there are the hundreds of millions of transistors. The leak current becomes huge. And in the time of Internet of Things, the sensors and LSI have to be combined to work, and this becomes a serious problem. And for high-performance computing and supercomputing, this becomes a problem. On this side, this is looking at the inside of the circuit. There are logics and memories located in a different place, and there should be some communications between the two. And uh, the, uh, these create the leak current, and there are some delays. We wanted to solve these problems. How to do it? Uh, we have to use the unvolatile functions. The volatile is as soon as the power is lost, the memory is also lost. Non-volatile is that when the power is off, still the memory is retained. The memories most of the time we use now is a volatile memory. And uh, my uh, the memory, myself, is also becoming volatile. Now we use the volatile memory, so we cannot turn it off. If we turn this to an, a non-volatile memory, we can turn it off. We naturally turn off the light of the room that we are not using. That is the same thing. And eventually, this green memory will be sitting on top of the, uh, the semiconductor log logics. And uh, so we can use the memory and the logics. Uh, and then, uh, the, usually, we have to do separately, but we can mix them. And we memory would, our memory is not made up on uh, the semiconductor, so it can be sitting on the top. Uh, it is uh, one millimeter or ten millimeters in length, but if it is vertical, it can be one microns, one tenth of a millimeter. So this reduces uh, the interconnecting wiring delay and also the power of discharge and recharge. So this is the f futuristic figure. This requires non-volatile memory. We use this already for the flash memory, a wonderful invention of Japan. And uh, there are the, uh, the performance or the properties that we have to satisfy. Uh, there should be high speed. There shouldn't be any limit on the endurance. And the flash memory can rewrite up to 1,000 times. So it is sold with a controller to prevent this problem. And then and the Spintronics element will be perfect for all of these functions. 
uh, that uses tonal magnetoresistance, TMR. The two magnets are combined with the insulator in the middle. The insulator does not conduct, have a conductancy, but if it is thin enough and uh, there is a tonal effect by Dr. Ezaki, and uh, the power can go through. And the spin orientation are preserved in that. Uh, in this special condition, uh, the spin uh, will be uh, able to tunnel to the hole on the other side. And this is the anti-parallel state. Uh, the N and S of the magnets are in anti-parallel and there is no tunnel. Uh, so uh, this is the high in resistance. And uh, this is zero and this will be one. This is how the element is designed. This change of resistance is important. This is at the room temperature. MIT and Tohoku University published these two cases. And the resistance, uh, it has to be go over 100% uh, to be utilized for the semiconductors. So this is a threshold. And researchers worked to close to 100%. It was difficult, but the MgO, uh, the cobalt, and uh, the uh, iron and boron uh, we used for this, the el electric mag uh, field. And with this, we obtained a big change of the resistance. So with the new materials and uh, MgO, cobalt, and uh, iron and boron, a uh, combination of the metal and the magnets, we overcome this threshold. This is great. But still, there were some challenges. That was, uh, you may say it doesn't matter, but the orientation of a magnet actually is important. Uh, this is the in-plane. Uh, these are the two magnets uh, sandwiching the insulator. Uh, this is the, uh, the field is in-plane and uh, the field is uh, perpendicular to the surface plane, and the function is very different. I cannot explain this fully uh, here, but there are two states between the two, and uh, the energy wall is uh, in between. Because of this energy wall, uh, we call it as non-volatile. Uh, it's not easy f uh, to transfer from this side to the other state. If it is used in the high temperature, there is the thermal fluctuations, and it may jump to the other side, and then that caused a problem. So the wall should be higher to, to for the stability. But in this case, the current is applied here, and then a lot of current has to be applied. But in this case, the even higher current has to be applied, so this is not good. So we want to use it perpendicular. Our hard disk uh, used this perpendicular system now. So uh, turn the things lateral to vertical um, is technically important. The young students are used to this word, phrase in the class. You know, um, if we say turn, uh, this person doesn't turn things laterally to vertical, this means that person is lazy. And it is a, a kind of pun. But turning things laterally to vertical um, is technically difficult, and also not to being lazy is important. And uh, this is a quite a complex table, but uh, in 2010, some seven years ago, and the empty tunnel junction uh, was developed, and the papers were published by many researchers. And as you can see, this is blank, and this is again blank. This means that the when we try to turn the things laterally to vertical, it involves a lot of effort. Uh, the MgO cobalt, uh, the iron and boron, uh, that is associated with high resistance. But this is typically in plane. So we tried uh, to align uh, the a magnet or the field perpendicular, but it didn't work well because if we have a good uh, resistance, 
and the switching doesn't work, and the vice versa was also true. So this was difficult to do both at the same time. Uh, we were in a rut at that time. We wanted to go in a certain direction, but we didn't know how. And coming back to the original slide, and this is connected to this. As I said, uh, this is to look at the magnet and also uh, the electric field. Again, the insulator, but what we used is uh, this is a thick insulator, so this is different from the tunnel uh, junction, but uh, the only this surface area changed. And when this yellow part is th thick, we cannot see the change. So we particularly look at this thin area that changes with the electric field. So as I said at the beginning, we wanted to go a uh, thin material. And uh, uh, this is uh, the element that changes its thickness gradually. It, when it is thick, it is in plane. If it is too thin, it is uh, paramagnetic. But in between, there is a special condition uh, with the right selection of the thickness, like 1.4 or 1.3 nanometers, and then we can found, uh, find the perpendicular. Uh, this is by the MGO and cobalt ion and boron with high resistance. So we can use this high resistant material by arranging the thickness appropriately. And I, now, high function magnetic tunnel junction was developed by us in 2010. And the surface area, we have the special magnet uh, so that the energy becomes lower when it is perpendicular in a very thin conditions. By achieving this thinness, uh, we can have the perpendicular anisotropy. 1.6 and 1.0. Uh, many groups used this kind of thickness, but we, they didn't look at these particular conditions. And uh, so the room temperature, we uh, were number three, but we looked at this in depth and we found out something new. And uh, the applicability of this to industry, uh, this is actually 300 millimeter a wafer, and we have to use our technology on this. And we got the funding for this research. Then using the silicon transistor, this blue bar is the property. And then the silicon transistor plus our elements, and then we can improve the performance. The lower, the better, as you can see. The power becomes lower, the air, uh, area can be ch smaller, and the speed is faster. Uh, we were able to demonstrate this. What we are going to do is this. The current LSI, the paradigm, is like this including your smartphone and PC. Uh, there are the logic and processing data. This requires lots of power in red. And uh, the DRAM is a memory. Uh, this is also a big market of two to three uh, trillion yen. And there is a gap of the speed. Uh, it is not striking a good balance. Going the downward, this is the run uh, the storage and around the flash three to four trillion yen is the market size but there are gaps so as totality um, it is not good it is not optimal consuming lots of power at the top but with the usage of the most current technology we can have the green color um, meaning the low power consumption, we can contribute to the sustainable society. Uh, of course, uh, there should be designers, 
and also the makers of the LSI, our colleague researchers and the company workers. This is a combination of all these people's contributions. Lastly, uh, what is going to come to us in the future? Of course, we want to complete this technology to bring this to the market. But what about uh, the, uh, the electric field effect? That comes in the next phase. Uh, there is a national project underway. So, um, to be continued. And then what about the magnetic semiconductor? That is a, a kind of a relative, a related fields are doing that research and discovering a new group of materials. One is, as was mentioned, the semi-ferromagnetic body controlling the electricity very well. And that is uh, the now newly created by other groups. So uh, there is uh, one uh, curiosity-driven magnetic body research leading to the new materials development. And uh, the control of the magnets also has a new knowledge. And then also the VLSI um, have uh, an improvement. Uh, we were able to come up with this wonderful result, and I feel so lucky about that, so that uh, we have a very good uh, fellow researchers working together with me. Because of that, we started with a curiosity-driven research to come up with a, the solid achievement. Thank you very much. Thank you.